So, what's going on guys? Wanted to try something a little bit different today. And I know I say that a lot, but you know what? We gotta keep things all over the place. I don't want this channel to be one big focus on something. So we do welding, we do car repairs, we do advice and reviews and all kinds of stuff. So, here's something a little bit different for you guys. I wanna go over buying a used BMW. Now, you guys see me, I have the 540i, and I just bought a used 2001 BMW X5. Now, what I'm seeing in the industry and, and in the way things are working now is these BMWs are extremely inexpensive. I mean, I'm seeing them listed all over Craigslist and all, those, all over Facebook Marketplace. And the prices almost seem like they're too good to be true. And to be totally honest with you, they are. Now, what you're going to run into when you're buying a used BMW is exactly this. BMWs by nature, and most German cars by nature, are much more maintenance intensive than your average vehicle. And the reason being is that they are a more high performance vehicle, they have more things in them that can go wrong, there's a lot more features, electronics, hardware, software, you name it, there's a ton of stuff that can go wrong with these cars. So. They are very maintenance intensive. And why you are seeing such low prices on these cars is because the vehicle will reach a point where it needs a major overhaul or a major maintenance. And before that time comes, the owners will usually get rid of them at a very discounted rate. So one of the things that you need to be looking out for when you see these things that are, you know, you see a 2008 BMW 5 Series for like three grand. Well, that car is probably due for one of its major maintenance items, which could cost anywhere from $1,000 to $5,000, depending on which vehicle you bought. Like, for instance, let's just take a 2006 BMW M5, the E60 M5. Now, you can pick those up. I've seen them for under $10,000. But the issue with that is that right around 100,000 miles, between 80 and 100,000 miles, the piston rod bearings need to be replaced. So, the connecting rod bearings, I should say, not piston rods, that's ridiculous, but the connecting rod bearings need to be replaced. Now, you take this to the dealership, and that's a $4,500 service. Who's going to want to pay ten grand for a car just to turn around and have it serviced for $4,500? And if you're not aware of that particular um, need for service, what you're going to run into is a huge bill once you let the motor go to shit, and it explodes. So... You have to be careful. Now, we just picked up a 2001 BMW X5 with the 4.4 liter V8 in it, which is a very maintenance intensive engine. We picked it up for a very, very good price, but it did have its share of problems. But the reason why I jumped on it was because of this. We have service history on this car. Lots and lots of service history. As a matter of fact, service history totaling about $12,000. And that service history begins at roughly, eh, let's see what the mileage was on the first service I have here. Mileage on the first service I have here was at about 30,000 miles. And the last service record is 176,000 miles. So we have full documentation from a BMW dealership of every single failure item that was replaced, every recall that was done, every fix that was performed from 30,000 miles to 175,000 miles or 176,000. We bought the vehicle with 188 on it, which means that there is a gap in the service history. Now that gap in the service history is only 12,000 miles long and there's not much that can go wrong in 12,000 miles. So in my personal opinion, I thought the deal was worth it, which it turned out to be worth it 100%. Now that's not to say that this car didn't have its faults and that's going to be any used car that you buy. This particular one, the AC belt was missing, the AC belt tensioner was missing, all of the passenger side electronics didn't work, including the windows, the door locks, all that stuff. The navigation unit was cooked. The nav computer in the dash was cooked. Um, it needed brakes. Uh, the rear hatch lift cylinders weren't working. It needed those. 
Um, just a bunch of little stuff. The blower motor was intermittent in it, so it would come on, turn off, come on, turn off. So if you were taking this car to the dealership, which I picked up for a very good deal, let's just say, I didn't pay this, but let's just say you bought this for $2,500. The maintenance items that I have done, the brakes, the blower motor, AC belt and tensioner, lift cylinders in the rear, the nav computer, the nav screen, and the various other little odds and ends that I've taken care of would probably be another $2,500 to fix if you were to take this to a dealership. So now you're into it for $5,000. This vehicle also needs tires. Figure another thousand. So now you're into it for six thousand, plus registration, sales tax, and all that other stuff. Depending on the state you live in, now you're into it for seven thousand. So for seven thousand dollars, is a 19-year-old car worth it at that point? And the answer is no. It's not. It's absolutely not. And that goes for every single car, not just BMW. That goes for every used car you're going to buy. You want to have a full, documented history on that vehicle, and by doing that you're going to get a vehicle that has a great starting point. So if you see a vehicle like this that was at an amazing price, has full dealer service history, and just happened to end up in the hands of someone who didn't want to spend the money to do the little odds and ends that it needed so they got rid of it, then you're, you're off to a good start. And if you're mechanically inclined, all the better. You can save yourself a ton of money. You can get yourself a car for a good deal. But what's going on with these German cars and this is what I wanted to you know kind of harp on because we have a ton of service history on ours but what I wanted to get through to you guys is that these German cars these foreign cars you know even some of the English stuff the Land Rover Jaguar Audi BMW Mercedes you know if we want to get into it Ferrari Porsche Lamborghini all that stuff these cars are very maintenance intensive and usually what happens with them and and what is the case with the one i just bought as well as my 540 believe it or not they end up on craigslist for you know at the time when i bought my 540 it was listed for thirteen thousand dollars i bought it 10 years ago so it was a relatively newer car it was only about eight years old at that point the car needed a ton of maintenance so i managed to get the car for a very very good deal i didn't pay thirteen thousand for it but the gentleman who owned it knew that it was due for a major service and he didn't want to pay for the service so he sold it to a friend of his. His friend got a hold of it, drove it for another 10,000 miles, realized that it was due for a major service, didn't want to spend the money to do the major service and sold it and so on and so on and so on. So now what tends to happen is these cars keep getting bought and sold without their major services being performed. So by the time you get a hold of the car, the engine's falling out of it, the transmission's falling out of it, the electrics don't work anymore, none of the services have been done, you've got to replace spark plugs, coils, you name it, you've got to replace it. So now the $1,200 car you thought you were getting a smoking deal on because it looked great in pictures is now turning into one of the biggest money pits that you'll ever own. So if I can offer a bit of advice to you guys is that if you see something that looks like it's too good to be true, it probably is. And one of the things that you need to do is that if you're mechanically inclined and you have no issue learning how to work on a car like this or you've worked on a car like this before, then dig deeper. See if it's got any service history whatsoever so at least you know what you're starting with. You know, if three owners prior all the major services were done and you know that from going forward you don't have to worry about the majors you just have to do all the little minor stuff that's wrong with it then go for it if you have zero service history on it do not trust Carfax on any of that because a lot of independent shops don't report to Carfax so what you may see is any dealership work that was done but you don't get to see any of the independent shop or the backyard stuff that was done to the car. I myself as a shop do report to Carfax so my customers can see their their service history on Carfax. However, a lot of shops don't report to them. So buying a used car nowadays especially is getting tougher and tougher and tougher because of how sophisticated and how technologically advanced a lot of these cars are. You're starting to see cars out there that are for sale for twelve and thirteen hundred dollars that have navigation systems that have heated everything seats steering wheel um they have you know 
active cruise control, they have parking sensors, backup cameras, you know, in in ceiling DVD players and all kinds of stuff that can go wrong with these things. And nine times out of ten, when you go to purchase one, something's going to be wrong with it if the price is right. If the price seems high, it's probably in really good shape and you might want to spend the money if you're not too mechanically inclined. So I just wanted to kind of make a quick video, and I know it's a talking video, but I wanted to try the 4K of this Canon camera. Plus, I kind of wanted to give you guys something to look out for when you're going to buy a used car. I see a lot of my customers who get burned on a $1,000 car. They drive it for six months, realize that it's going to cost them way too much money to fix it, and either I end up getting rid of the car, they end up getting rid of the car, or the car just goes to the junkyard because they can't afford to fix it. And that's okay. Not all of us can afford, you know, millions of dollars worth of repair bills on a car that you bought for $1,200. Once you get to the $1,200 repair bill mark, there was no sense in buying the car for $1,200 in the first place because it wasn't a deal. So guys, keep your eyes open. Make sure that you're getting as much of the service history as you possibly can. Make sure that you're getting an honest seller, and I know that's kind of difficult, but if you can if you can deal with it, buy from someone you know, or maybe you know someone who knows someone who knows someone, a friend of a friend. Try to keep your dealings with buying used cars as close as possible. Stay away from these fly-by-night dealerships that are there one day and gone the next. Stay away from Craigslist ads that do not have properly constructed sentences. Um, stay away from the Facebook Marketplace ads where it says one word, good car, ready to go. You know, stay away from those. Because guaranteed, if it's an 08 BMW 535i xDrive, it's $2,500 and it says car good, need tire, take home, blah, you know, whatever. If the listing looks like it was written by someone who's got a third grade education, stay away from the car. <laughs> Just do yourself a favor, stay away from it. And when buying a German car, first thing you should ask, do you have service records? Or can you somehow provide service records on the car? If they say no, I would stay away from it. So I hope that little video kind of helps you guys out when you're going to buy a used car. I know we focused mainly on the German stuff, but it does apply to pretty much every other vehicle on the planet as well. Do your research, do your due diligence, and make sure you're making a smart purchase, guys, because you know what? If you're like me, every bit of money you have in your pocket is very important to you. And when you make an investment in something such as a vehicle, you want to make sure that you are getting your money's worth with that investment. So just be careful, guys. All right, I will see you all in the next one. I don't know what the next one's gonna be. I have these random ideas that pop in my head and I just decide to film them. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Maybe you'll enjoy the 4K. I don't know, it's hard to film in 4K with this camera unless it's stationary because the focus just goes in and out and in and out. So we'll see how it looks when I'm editing it, but enjoy the rest of your Sunday, guys, and I will see you on the next one. Have a great night.